Mickey Devlin, Air United Club captain, and you're watching Quill 18. Ah Excellent, thank okay. you so much. No problem. I appreciate no problem. it. Hey folks, Quilly Team here and welcome, welcome, welcome to Management Mondays where we are once again playing some football manager. Hey, <laughs> oh man, uh, do, do, do I like sea shanties? I do like sea shanties. Oh, that's cool. And a chips tune album? I'll have to check that out, Perk. That is really neat. And yeah, for those of you who weren't around uh, for the announcement on previous streams, this Wednesday, so in two days, will be a brand new Crusader Kings 3 Let's Play uh, that will be live streamed. So on Wednesdays, we are starting CK3 with, of course, the latest expansion, uh, Royal Court, which I think comes out for everyone tomorrow. I've been dabbling around with it a little bit, which is pretty fun. Thought about starting just a YouTube series uh, for it, but I kind of miss live streaming CK3. There's something really special about it. Bum, 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 bum. So last time, last week when we played, uh, we put into use a new strategy here in uh, Football Manager and think it went fairly well. Uh, the one thing that caught us out for, we had three games basically back to back to back to back with very little break. And the 3-4-3 three, three strategy we're using with the three central defenders, um, which might make us a little bit vulnerable against stronger teams, but also really taxed our pool of central defenders. So while it is a pretty funky strat that seemed to work pretty well, I think, I suspect we'll have to go to this 4-3-3, which is what we were discussing at the end of last stream. Um, the only thing that I wasn't sure about is whether I wanted to play the, uh, the middle position wide or narrow. Uh, I think we might play this today and see how it goes. <laughs> Dun, 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 CK3 is a great game for chatting to demand stupid things. That's the thing, like, it's... I think CK3 makes such a fantastic streaming game. I've always had a ton of fun when we've done CK3 as a as a live stream thing. It's just, it's just a perfect thing to be dorky and interactive with and to get... CK3 is one of those games where it's best when things are going poorly. So getting really bad advice from chat is usually the best way to play the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> CK3 channel points for big decisions. I mean, maybe. What I wish is that um, Paradox got like Twitch integration for its games, you know? Because there's a lot of potential for stuff like that. Um, if nothing else, for things like CK3 and U4, or any, any of the games where they have um, um, like dialogue boxes with decisions, it would be great to have Twitch-based voting integrated for those decisions, right? Just like, you know how like Slate Aspire, we have voting for like what card to draft and things like that. Well, same sort of vibe. It would be amazing if something like that existed. Because doing a manual thing for every one of those dialogue boxes is, is, is tedious. Although we'll probably do some for some key ones, something like that. Twitch plays U4 when, exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> Spilled a little bit. All right, I don't think that's gonna be a stain. All right, all good. <laughs> uh, Per says, in my current football manager game, the AI managed to have Air United end up at the bottom position. Hopefully Quill is better than the AI. Well, it's gonna be tricky. Because the thing is, Air right now is not very well positioned to do well in the championship league, unfortunately. Just the way that it is, um, you know, we, we don't have a ton of funding. Um, and we don't have the best, you know, players on paper in the league. Furthermore, in our particular instance of things, we have had a really unfortunate injury here with Aaron Muirhead, who broke his leg, uh, and he is one of our key sort of uh, midfielders, really, and he's actually quite flexible. He can play a lot of different roles, so having him out is pretty upsetting. We are also going to have a fairly difficult start today. Uh, we are playing a league game against Hamilton here, uh, which is going to be an away game. Uh, currently, they are fourth in the championship, and we are sitting at ninth, which is pretty miserable. Um, and again, yeah, that was after a couple of kind of disappointing outings. So last time we did three matches, Clyde, Wraith, and Dumferlin over here. Uh, and this was with our new strategy, the 3-4-3. And um, it went fairly well. It was a little bit rough against Clyde over here. We actually expected to dominate them quite a bit more than we did. Um, and so that that kind of, that 3-2 that was actually a little bit disappointing. Um, the 3-2 win against Wraith was actually pretty good. Um, we did start off being down 2-0. 
but then we made a huge comeback for a 3-2 victory. Uh, and then that's when we went to Dumfriendland. You can see the uh, the games, right? We only had three days off, and then we only had a couple of days off um, between these games. So we were exhausted. Our central defenders were exhausted when we came into here against a strong, you know, Dumfriendland, kind of a stronger team. Um, and it was, it was a pretty bad spanking. Although a lot of these goals, I think, happened like really early on. Did, did they not score like three times like very early on? Uh, four minutes, 23 minutes, 34 minutes, then 43 minutes. And the second half, we scored. So we, we fell quite behind on the, in the first half. Then did we switch? We might have switched to a 4-4-2 um, at that point. Uh, and that's the thing. We can uh, we can maybe play around with the idea of swapping between a couple of different strats like that mid-game. But yeah, I think it's once we realize that our... Like, with the 3-4-3, with only three defenders in the back, we were always going to be a little bit vulnerable. And then with them becoming exhausted, I think that became a much, much, much bigger problem. So, um... Switching strats is good, but I think it does highlight our need for maybe something like uh, this 4-4-3, which I'm, I want to try this today and see how it feels. Canada's destroying everyone World Cup qualifying. That's great. I haven't watched any of that. I really would like to see it. We'll see. This game, are you allowed to get better funding somehow next season starts? Uh, depending on how much your board likes you, how well you did. So yeah, there there is. It's not um, It's not quite as kind of a linear growth like uh, like you would find in, say, Motorsport Manager, right? Where it's like fairly straightforward kind of thing. The funding in this is a lot more complicated. Um, I believe that as your team does better, you will get... So uh, as your team gets better, we'll sell more tickets. So I think our stadium can have something like um, 10,000 seats in it. Club info... Well, capacity, 10,000, right over here. We've sold uh, just about a thousand season tickets, and then we could take a look at what our sales are at each individual game, but I suspect we're not coming close to selling out, so that's one of the things. The other thing is if we go deep into tournaments, uh, we get more prize money, and if we get far enough into the tournaments to actually face off against a, a bigger team, we will also get a slice of the television income, which is a big deal. Uh, there's also sponsorships and things that kick in at the start of each season, which will be affected by uh, how well you do. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes you can talk to the board as well to just just give you extra funding, just generally speaking. Mm -hmm. This formation seems like it should dominate the midfield, but might struggle with intense points. Well, yeah, so that, that is something I'm a little concerned about here. Um, we could adapt it. I do think the three strikers is quite nice. Um, and, and the thing is, we could always drop back to our 4-4-2 as well, um, and maybe come up with a couple of different versions or interpretations of the 4-4-2. But for today, what we're going to do is we're going to play the 4-3-3, and uh, I'd like to give it at least a couple of matches. The familiarity came out pretty decent, the position roll duty part is a little bit lower, but everything else is fairly straightforward. Also, um, this strategy was set up in a certain way at the end of last episode. I've gone and tweaked a lot of the, um, the tactical extra instructions over here for a couple of reasons. One, to be a little bit uh, um, more compatible with what we're already doing to lessen the learning curve. And the other thing is the intensity here of this tactic when we uh, when we first started playing with around with it at the end of last week's stream, the intensity was quite a bit higher. So I've tweaked a few things to bring the intensity down a bit lower uh, just because I don't think we can manage something that's super high up. Can the stadium be upgraded somehow? I'm, I'm, I, there are things for that. Uh, you can potentially get new stadiums. Uh, I think you can fund stadium expansions as well, and that might be something we look into once the uh, um, once we do get more more fans that might be interested in coming. Uh, I think we are somewhat limited. I think it does factor in the population of where we are. So air only has a certain population, so that might be simulated in here. I don't know, but I think so. The other thing is the um, the facilities at the club which I don't know where that would show up, but like our training, fa oh, facilities button right over here. Um, doo -doo -doo. So yeah, city air, it doesn't list their population in the game, so I'm assuming it goes. But then yeah, we got like training facilities, which is below average. Our youth facilities are only average. We don't have a stadium sponsor. Uh, so these sorts of things can also be things that get improved uh, going forward. So um, I don't know. But for now, we just have to focus on actually trying to win some games as much as possible. So today, we're, I mean, we're going to do at least two games. We might get three. Uh, all of it is going to be in the championship. So no cup games whatsoever. It's going to be away against Hamilton, then home against Morton. And then if we get there, another away game against Partrick Thistle here. So two away games um, is going to be a little bit tougher. I mean, it's a little bit tougher on our 
on our team because it's a little bit more exhausting uh, than they never play as well if they're not at home. Uh, but at least it's not a super packed schedule like what we had last week. Uh, so we'll actually have a little bit of time to rest in between. But two away matches, which will be a little trickier and it's all championship, which is also gonna be trickier um, in there. But we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I haven't seen this tactic yet. What's the thought between having three flat meal fillers instead of a DM? Well, I mean, that's a great question. So you're saying, what if we had um, the four back here, one defensive midfielder, a pair of midfielders, and then still three, the three attackers? I'm having a hard time getting a vibe for how that would be significantly different. Because if nothing else, wouldn't that just increase the whole, well, we dominate the, um, the the middle, but are a little bit weaker on the edges, defensively speaking? Um, in terms of for uh, for offensive play, the deep line playmaker does sit a little further back. Uh, so if you're talking about how we're going to string together the verticality. So yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I do worry a bit that Quill only has one player in the casting role. That needs to sort of sticks back up. I feel like FM22 favors the bold. Uh, that That is interesting. And that is something we could consider. Um, uh, first of all, so we've got, we haven't used um, a, a Menzala before. Uh, but what we could do is we could make our Menzala more attacking. The other thing we could do is we could make some more of our strikers attacking. Currently, our fullbacks are set to automatic roll. Um, which I don't think I'm going to want them to be super aggro because I'm kind of worried. Well, first of all, this is part of our cautious plan. We are going to be facing up against a better team and an away situation over here. I think we got to sit back. I'm also worried about running them a little too tired. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to a 4-5-1. Like, I always love it when we're discussing a tactic and people come in and be like, why don't you try something completely different that also doesn't work at all with the players that you've got currently packed? <laughs> Bump, bump, bump. Anyway, let's go to inbox. Uh, Pre-match -pr press conference. Sure, let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's kick this off. First question from Sean Morrison, Sky Sports News. What sort of response are you looking for your players after disappointing re response uh, result against Dumferlin? Uh, I'd like to like really light their fire. Yeah, there you go. The Dumferlin result will drive the team on to do a much better this match. I mean, really, again, I can't blame the players because they were just exhausted because we had like five matches in six days um, and uh, not enough subs for the triple uh, center performance. And that's the thing. If we went to a five, five, whatever, whatever, with five players in the back, that would still be three central defenders. So it still doesn't work with our, um, our like our pool of players because we don't have enough central defenders and we have a lot of strikers. So we definitely want to go at least two strikers, which is why I started with the 4-4-2. And I think the three strikers is maybe going to be best, speaking of aggression. How do you think Andy Murdoch's handling all the criticism of our recent performance? You know what? Uh, he's going to make them eat their words, sure. So you can handle the pressure? I'm absolutely certain he can. Do you think it's important for Murdoch to put a form? Dude, stop being a punk about Andy Murdoch. What the hell? None of us pay any attention to crit. Wow, that might be too dismissive of him. Don't think it's appropriate to answer this considering me. Hey, listen. Ignore everything that's written, just concentrate on his game. Like, seriously, don't be a punk. Paul Grant, does Jordan Houston have the key attributes to unpick Hamilton? Unpick? Does that mean just to, like, disrupt them? To mess with them? I'm really not used to that kind of phrasing. Um, so, uh, what, Jordan Houston is interesting because he's kind of one of our newer players, a little younger at 21, but I think with a lot of potential for development, he's actually not too bad. Um, and it is interesting that currently his best position would actually be sort of this, this wing back over here. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm just going to be neutral on this one. Uh, you're the ones writing the headlines. We're a team, we win or lose at a team. Just to shake it up, I don't know. How important is it that the players like Anthony Gomez Mancini are ultra consistent from one match? And, uh, he has, he's played, what, two matches for us? Maybe, like, that's it? He's one of the players we got on loan. But he is very important. We do need him to do quite well, but I don't want to put too much pressure on him. Uh, like, it's certainly preferable to having inconsistent players, right? I'm getting kind of cranky at the press. They're being... <laughs> they're being very annoying today. Paul Grant. Why does he... Like, <laughs> what do I got to do to make that person happier? Press being the press, right? 
Ooh, Sean McGinty. L training rating below six? Like, what the hell? All right, there you go. I mean, at least uh, we do have the uh, the traits that, that mean we can talk to these people pretty well about their shit-ass training. Jack Baird as well, you know? Uh, we're going to... I wish these locked on a little bit better. Warren player, criticized training, development, been very disappointed. Yeah, there you go. At least you're in a pretty good mood. Oi! Get him fired. It's an accurate simulation. The press being such, like, punks. Unpick means create chances against them. Unpick means, like, unlock their defense. Oh, okay. All right. All right, tactical meeting time. Yeah, we'll trigger a press when Kai Fortheringham is going at it. They, okay, see, my assistant manager always thinks I should be more aggro than planned. Like, we should run a positive thing instead of cautious. And he's always wanting to go one notch up. And maybe we should. But it's an away match against a team who should be a little stronger than us. I think cautious is the right way to go. Hmm. I think I have too many defensive things, but okay. Let's let's officially put these guys onto support. Make sure they're locked on. That I don't want them to go crazy on the wings. I mean, maybe we should just go balanced. Aspen has his own preferred tactics and style. He'll always keep on recommending. Okay, so that's that's part of the issue. Although, still, I'm happy with doing this because I don't. I wouldn't want the uh, fullbacks to be on full defensive uh, mode. So I think I'm going to officially say, yeah, I'm not going to trust the automatic. But we only have three people then on defensive, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Ball winning midfielder and our two central defenders. Like, come on. And yeah, not enough people on pure attacking role, but I'm not sure where I'd want to put it. And it doesn't mean like the support people don't take chances, don't go for shots. I think it's fine. But yeah, so Afalabi, who's one of our lone players, for some reason lacking a little match sharpness, which I'm surprised about, because I thought we'd been playing him like very often, but I decided to start him today and I knew that it was going to complain a little bit. He's just in, in like the slight yellow or something instead of green. Like it's not, it's not critically bad. Hopefully it's going to work out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so some players are worried about the lack of familiarity with the formation and it is, it is new. It's their first time playing this formation, but it's not dramatically different from before, which I guess is why not too many people are complaining about it. Um, and yeah, Sean McGinty's fairly happy. Aiden McAdams is happy about it. That's going to be good. All right. Just straight up tell the journalists they're dumb. Okay, good, I'll do that. I should just uh, hire Essentia as my assistant manager and just get her to shut down these annoying journalists sometimes with her mod hammer. And nothing to lose here. We know we're, how good we are. Let's show everyone what we're capable of. I don't like the whole we've got nothing to lose here. Because, like, every other part of this comment sounds relatively positive. That part makes it sound like, listen, we know we're, we're like, going to get obliterated. So don't worry too I don't know. See this one here, know we're the underdogs. I guess, I guess we are the underdogs, that's true, but I don't like the sense of we've got nothing to lose here. But we know how good we are, let's show everyone else what we're capable of. I guess that's fair. We didn't really get much, although so far everyone's composed, so I don't think I'm going to necessarily throw in any more talk over here because composed is fine. We could do a little bit better. You know, I, I don't know, trust you to make the difference. It's not really doing much. How about, um, it's like, yeah, uh, pump fist. Trust me to make the difference. No, no one's really responding to anything. All right, we'll just go for the kickoff. It's going to be okay. Yeah, I know I can storm out from the press conference, but I don't know if that's a brilliant idea. We could just send our, um, our assistant manager to press conferences as well. All right, let's take a look at our highlight. Yeah, we're going to go back to extended highlights over here because we're not, uh, Desperate for filling things in. Oh my god, like four and a half minutes of that highlight. Admittedly, some of that was set to only key. So let's see how we are. So we are in the dark blue over here. We are playing in our away colors. Uh, looks like we had a uh, kick from the goalkeeper there, which unfortunately got bungled. Yeah, Matheson blocks the path. So they're going to be on the offense here, which I don't like. I've got Martin, crosses it all the way over to Templeton, although he gets shut down pretty quick. Sir Jane sends it far forward. A kind of a pass in the space kind of thing, but there was no hope really of their striker ever getting there either before our defender or in this key, in case the goalkeeper sends it deep. All right, they've still got possession over here. Stop talking to the team, it never works. Ah! Christ, Mick Adams, thank you very much for that save. That was terrifying. What the hell? 
Maybe I should, uh, should I turn down the pass direct? That's not really. I think I still like that as a counter. Okay, finally we got some possession. Moffat sends it back to, Ch uh, well, not to Chalmers, but Chalmers has got it now. Houston going to try to move it up, not really going wide. And Chalmers, I might have to try to tell them to widen the uh, the position a little bit so our fullbacks can still move up. Here you go, Mixwell with a nice run, good angle. Oh, he's called it back a little, sends it back to Afalabi, who gets pinned down right away. And to the wing, to Mancini, back to Chalmers, centered up. He doesn't really have a shot. Murdoch can probably send it to wing. No, centers it to Chalmers. Moffat's got a bit of a window. He's got to shoot it from outside the box. But uh, you know what? I'm not, I, didn't, I didn't hate that. I didn't hate that attempt. That's going to be okay. How are we doing over here? Possession is about 50-50, uh, which isn't bad to see. Love that. We don't have a proper shot yet, and they did get one shot on target. It was beautifully saved. <sighs> yeah, so 11 minutes in. We haven't really done anything yet. Oh, but we've got the ball now. Moffat, Afalabi. Afalabi's going to have to send it back to Murdoch. Full reset back to McGinty, one of the central defenders. Joe Chalmers sends a deep Moffat. He's got a little bit of a gap. Can he get the shot off? No, again, he's forced to fire as he does get sandwiched in uh, from outside the box and send it far, far, far too high. That's a shame, but hey, at least we got an actual shot on. Two to one shots. My God. Not a whole lot going on here. More of a defensive battle than anything else. 25 minutes in. We got a second shot in there somewhere. Not worthy of a highlight, apparently. What the heck? We're half an hour in, and there's barely anything going on. I know, Moffat's finishing. We, all of our finishing sucks, and unfortunately, I think we're kind of capped on that. So that might be something to look at, although we do have a lot of strikers. Uh, we did pick up um, we did pick up Thompson on loan, and I think he actually was, was going to do kind of okay. Ooh, Moffat does not have the header there, unfortunately. I don't think Moffat's super tall. So I don't think he has to get super jump. Houston with a beautiful interception. Moffat slices between some defenders, Thompson, but he's surrounded by white shirts. Chalmers with a pass forward to Moffat. Much closer now. Gets it in. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That was gorgeous. That entire sequence was absolutely beautiful. Oh, I, yeah. You know what? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. We're, we're going to need we're going to need a replay of that, please. Let's see that again. So Moffat's got possession over there. That was actually after a fairly nice turnaround, wasn't it? Go back another 10 seconds. Yeah, so they've got it. They pass it forward. They've got it to Templeton. It's going to happen right over here. Templeton is... Oh, he gets it back to Foringham. Ah, gets it back here, and Templeton's trying to make the run forward, but couldn't get there in time. Or, well, Houston was just perfectly positioned to pick that up. So maybe a kind of a bad pass initiation by Foringham. Woohoo! Then Houston, we've got a bunch of space over here. He had Moffat or Afalabi who could have gone for. Moffat, though, has got a wall of white defenders behind him. But he finds this gap right here as the defender is trying to turn around, or probably the center midfielder is turning around. And he just sends it up to Thompson. Now, Thompson, again, new to our team over here, right? Just picked him up on loan. But this, to me, is, is showing a certain good coordination and pairing. So Thompson, who was playing, we're playing as a pressing forward today on support. Psst. We got whiskey and chocolate. Quite Tony! If we donate enough, maybe we can hire the Ghostbusters help with the possession problem. <laughs> I love it. That was some true direct counterplay, to be honest. Nice. All right, so yeah, Moffat sends it up to Thompson, who's already got a lot of tempo. He does get pilled down by the walls, but this backwards past the Chalmers, who immediately boots it forward to Moffat, who just hits the gas. Beating the defenders, boom. This little pass into space kind of move, direct pass. Oh, just an absolute thing of beauty. And just like that, we are up one while being the away team. Is the game time? Oh, it's like a pause. Even better the second time. No, that was gorgeous. Fathering him must feel kind of bad about basically starting that. Although, you know, there's only so much that any one player can blame themselves out. Because after that, get it out of there. There you go. McGinty clears it. Thompson's there to pick it up. I'm so happy we picked up Thompson on the loan. I think he is going to be significant. I can't remember. We may have got, got him contracted for like two years here. Huge pass forward to Mancini. Another one of our loaners has to send it back. Aflabi boots it from outside the box. Oh my god, it wasn't even delivered with that much velocity. But I think the goalkeeper misjudged a little bit of how far he had to uh, jump. He really should have stayed on his feet for another step or two, and then he would have been able to leap in there. And just like that, we've got a two-point lead. Houston's on the offense. Oh, can't... Oh, oh! I was going to say, can't get it to Thompson, but he picks up the rebound after the defenders are just sort of shocked at the interception. Mancini with a beautiful header to Moffat. Oh my god, I thought that was going to be 3-0. Holy crap. We get a corner out of it, though. There's <laughs> there's something in the air tonight. <laughs> oh, I thought that was going to be some. Aflabi keeps it in. Ooh, ah, but that is the end of the offense. 
Might need to trade for these loaners. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't think we can afford them is the problem. Uh, they're mostly loaners from our um, from our sister club. Uh, so we're getting some nice quality over there. Wow, the sporting game is involved in a lot of pay. Houston boots it away. He's playing like a dream too. Although that is unfortunate. Ah, we got whiskey and chocolate. Halco says, <laughs> "You know how this goes." Air. Oh, Halco's trying to get the cheers again. Oh my God! Did you see the curl on that? Like he kicked the Matheson kicked the ball, and I was like, "Oh, he's gonna kick it way wide over here." But it had this curl going in. Luckily, the goalkeeper read it because I think that might have gone in here. Woohoo! What a save. They do have a corner out of it, though. And what do they say about those 2-0 uh, leads? They're the most dangerous ones in the world. <sighs> Ryan from the opposition does get his head on it, but can't get it into the net. Two extra minutes of injury time. Holy crap. All right, let's crush a water bottle. I've had lots of shots on target, I'm so, so I'm happy. I mean, I guess it's a way to say it. Like, come on, I'm thrilled, but sure. The Ass Man actually does seem to pick really good options for us in here. And yeah, I would say the team is looking inspired and motivated. I mean, ho, ho, ho. Our arena looks much better than ours. Punisher, thanks for saying that. That's great. Oh, there's a slightly older whiskey and chocolate that I missed. Okay, hold on. I don't want my Streamlabs open for some reason. I think I had it open and I closed it when I was getting ready. I closed the wrong tabs. Oh, I'm running out of breath. I'm starting to get dizzy. Uh, bo 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 boom, refresh, refresh, refresh. Refresh. Oh, whoa! Yes, Corn Hungus. I completely missed that. So thank you very much, chat, for pointing that out. Uh, that was an extremely generous donation. I feel so bad that I missed it. Clearly, getting a little caught up in the drama over here on the pitch. Uh, thank you very much, Corn Hungus. I've been watching your videos for over eight years now, since I was in the sixth grade. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. <clears throat> Thanks for many uh, hours of entertainment and fun. Well, thank you very much, Corn Hungus. Thank you for making me feel a little bit old. <laughs> and also thinking, hmm, I should probably watch my language a little bit more in my videos. <laughs> oh. All right, Popescu. That's funny, we have a, uh, we have a crazy politician here in town uh, called Popescu who's batshit. Ah. Oh. Ooh, Templeton with a free kick! Oh my god! I thought Hamilton was gonna head it into the net there, and unfortunately he's still got the offense off. Templeton coming in again from outside the box! But he sends it wide for a goal kick for us. Alright. 50 minutes in. The 2-0 lead. Free kick given for someone. Doesn't seem to have gone anywhere. At this minute, like... Okay, here's they're starting to do some substitutions. We're gonna take a look very soon, possibly after this play over here. We've got quite the aggro. This McDonald just, like, carried the ball so far. Over Mullen wide. Matheson, who's really looking for a cross, got a good angle there. Smith does get ahead on it, but McAdams just snatches it out of the air. Another beautiful save, as someone said in the chat, by Grabthar's Hammer. What a save. All right, McSwell over here does have a yellow card. Um, how's the exhaustion levels? At a glance, it looks like Mancini is probably the most tired out there. He is having a good game, though. I'm not looking to pull him out quite yet, although probably fairly soon. And then, yeah, the other one might be Mixwell just because he's got the yellow. I don't know if I want to do a substitution quite yet. Let's give it another five minutes and we'll take a, we'll take a glance at things. Whew. Man. Yeah, we actually got a yellow card in the first half. Oh, man. A bunch of time just went by. All right, let's take a look. I think they're, they've done all their substitutions. we got another yellow card here with Houston. So both of our fullbacks have a yellow card, which is a little scary because they might start to be a little bit more passive on the defense. Okay, Gomez Mancini is absolutely exhausted. So we're going to go ahead and bring in a sub, which is a little tricky to be honest. Although mostly that might be a problem of playing the Mets. If we just change this to say, let's say we change it to a generic central midfielder role. There's going to be a few more options available for it, including just moving some people around. But I think I'll bring O'Connor in. And yeah, we'll, we'll just have a, a much lower stress kind of central midfielder kind of role for him. Um, he doesn't have much sharpness either, so that's really going to open us up in the midfield. Um, unless now might be time to just flip to a 4-4-2. That actually might be better for us, actually. Um, if I cancel this... Now if I switch to the 4-4-2, because then we only need two central midfielders over here, and we can tweak things a wee bit. Um, I 
Grayling Patrick Redding this way. I like that. And then yeah, Moffat, we'll just have him pull back uh, to the box to box midfielder for a little bit. And then we'll probably sub him out relatively soon as well. But yeah, I kind of like this idea. Is it, you know, we're not going to fall into the trap where we let a particular position exhaust themselves like we have before. Um, maybe I'll just do the one sub for now. <laughs> I like that. But yeah, Mancini... Whoa! I thought there was a, maybe going to be a, an injury there. Mancini is... Um, is always going to be a little bit more tired because his uh, role is very demanding. Oh, no! Oh, the little boot save, but they're still going. Smith's got to get another slide save by our defenders. Holy shit, our central defenders just did so much for us there. I was sure that was going to be a goal, then I was also sure it was going to be a goal. That free kick had a hell of a lot of curl to it, but it hit the crossbar. All right, let's look for maybe another sub over here. And yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, maybe pulling out one of the players that does have a yellow here. Yeah, stock held over there. That's not terrible. I think we'll do that. Are we winning? Yeah, we are. Shocking. But we are. Oh, hold on. I think I'm going to prioritize a different change. Because uh, I didn't realize that uh, my strikers actually were getting very tired now. I might just sub both these. And yeah, we still have Moffat in the midfield. Maybe, okay, hold on. Actually, sure there's just an undo change over there. If we just bring Moffat forward like this. Bring that or Dare over here. Although you prefer to play on the right, which is where, there we go, Murdoch. There we go, that's better. We still have one more sub. Maybe we'll just do this for now. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Moffat can play so many positions. It does look like since we switched the 4-4-2, they've had more, pos more things open to them. Um, but... That might not be the 4-4-2. That might just be because of, you know, relative exhaustion levels. So there we go. Both our central defenders are getting kind of wanked out. Uh, I think I'll just replace McForty with Jack Barrett. I think that's probably where I want to go for the last few minutes over here. There is an undo bottom left. Oh, over there! Why is the undo there instead of over here? All right. Afolabi! Oh, he's got no one to pass it to, though. Oh, oh, and Moffat with the header, although Popescu's there to block. Moyo's on the offense. He can get it out to Mullen. We have a lot of defenders here, although fair. Oh, no! Okay, um... Of course, I use the last sub. Why is this showing me McSwell? Yeah, because he's he's been redlined, so we can't use him. Actually, if we switch back to the sort of a four-four-three with one fewer striker now, that would sort of make sense. There we go. I could pull another striker back. Like, I could move everything back a little bit and sort of play a, like a 4-1-3-1 kind of vibe, but I think we'll do this. Okay, let's use this. I get their free kick. The Pescu just delivers it right into the arms of McAdams. Oh, you know what we should do? Hang on. Uh, in possession, time-wasting, to the max! That team mentality here defensive. Apparently we don't. Uh, oh, 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 oh. It would be nice if we came out of this with a clean sheet. All right, Hattie moves it away. 
I can't, I can't, I can't change you. I should have said ignore. Oh, Mick 40 clears it over to Moffat, who apparently is quite tired, but he just boots it forward. Don't even need to get anything done. We just need to slow things down if we got to throw in. And there's the whistle. It's an away game against a stronger team. And in the end, we were a player short. 2-0. Clean sheet, baby. Oh, yeah. Proud of your performance out there. No one gave us a chance today. Well done. Everyone's looking happy. Good stuff. I think this means McSwell is going to be out for the next match, though, right? Because of the red card. Achievement unlocked. I'm the boss. What does that mean? You find one of your club players. Ha <laughs> ha! It was an automatic find for getting the uh, the red card. Woo-wee! Woo My Scottish? No, I'm Canadian. French Canadian at that, but we, uh, uh, essentially my wife did a semester of college in air. We fell in love with the town and that was like 10 years ago. And we've gone back like all the time, all the time, all the time. And, uh, so when I had to pick a football club for this game, air United was the one man quality, quality finishing the difference. I mean, someone, you know, we keep talking about our finishing, maybe not being so great, but that's going to change over here. All right, let's kick this off. Must be delighted with that results. I'm very happy we did everything. Pleasing victory. Uh, proved to be the best team. How did you enjoy Joe Palmer's uh, performance? Oh man, it was inspired, wasn't it? You worried about Michael Miller's struggles on loan at... What is this? Who cares about this? I'm here to talk about the players who are here and playing for this team right now. Yeah, this is, this is one of our players is away at loan somewhere. Ooh. Press conference atmosphere has become pessimistic. Public wants a proper answer from you. Well, you know, I'm not worried. It's why he's on loan. It's part of the development. Wait, how are things between you and the chairperson? Like, we have a good working relationship. Be able to offer any insight into the reasons behind your current tactical approach. S these are totally unspecific. I think every player has to work out the best approach given the players at his or her disposal and uh, his own natural inclinations are. It's the case for me, at least. You know what? I'm just going to start sending my assistant manager in my press conferences, apparently. What the hell? Yeah, Mixwell banned for a match. Yeah, I might just send uh, him out there. Okay, so I feel like this is pretty happy making. Um, don't mind that at all. Would maybe be a little happier if we had a few more midfielders, but we have a couple ways to just like change what our tactic is mid game to deal with exhaustion and what subs we have access to. You know, dropping from the 4 3 3 to a 4 4 2, so that instead of three mid uh, center midfielders, we've got just two and then the two uh, wings. Um, so that's not so bad. But yeah, we got to take McSwell out of that. And I guess we'd be starting Patrick Redding over here. So we have seven days to the next match, so hopefully people won't be too tired. Our training is focused on the 4-3-3, which I'm very pleased with. Um, yeah, so we're playing Morton next over here. Lots well, community outreach, team bonding, try to get that better. Chance creation, chance con conversion. We've been doing a lot of work on chance conversion over here, just to try to improve that finishing as much as possible. Sorry, you're breaking me? Why are you breaking me? Much essentia word? What? Now I'm broken. I'm confused with what's going on. <laughs> what happens if you're maximum mean to the press constantly? I don't know. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to keep that positive mentality in there, but that's obviously not working. So maybe I'll just focus on managing the team. Mm -hmm. McSwell. Yep. Acknowledges and deserve to be fined for the dismissal. He was up to most improved his side of the game. Good. Reveals tight bond with Smith. Uh huh. And we finish scouting Brown, who's cheap as chips, except for the uh, the transfer rate, which is not going to be any good. Um, so we'll just good to know the scouting changes, but I don't think we're going to pursue this any further. Although he does have sick potential ability, which I guess is why he's there. Extremely doubtful. Yeah, it's not going to be something we can pick up for our team, unfortunately. Womp womp. What can Brown do for us? Not a whole heck of a lot. Declare war on the press. Show superiority as a result of diplomatic insult. <laughs> oh, man. What 
the wrong, don't like that move. With Hewitt? Oh, sending Michael Hewitt to Clyde on loan. Yeah, well, that was actually... Oh, canceled loan. The loan of Jacob Badeau to Air has been canceled. There's limit two loan players. Oh, so we had been trying to pick him up as well, but yeah, we do have a limit. Is this a limit of two players? Oh, from a club in a different division. Because we do have a limit of four players on loan, I think, in our league, which we do have over here, between uh, Mancini, Thompson, Afalabi, and Mick Swell. Uh, so I, I don't th I think it wouldn't have gone through for a few different reasons, actually. I don't think there's anything we have to make change-wise going into this match. So, uh, Grenuk, like Morton over here, they're currently rated 10th in our league. It's going to be a home game. Uh, we could actually play, like, this actually is a good idea for us to maybe not play cautious. I think we are going to be playing a more positive mentality. Um, I could just change the tactic now since it is what we're training. We could go back to the 3-4-3, but I think I like the 4-3-3. Maybe what we'll do is we'll just change it to positive here. And then that will be included in our training. And we'll double check the uh, familiarity with things. So Michael Hewitt, who we sent away on loan, actually got a goal. That's very nice. Why don't you piss off the press is entertaining? Like, what am I doing wrong with the press? Should I be more mopey? Like, what are they expecting? Maybe they had money riding and the other team winning, maybe. Press sucks, but your system manager will always suck more. Last time I let my system manager with the press talks, he went with arms wide open, patronly approaching press, stating, I'm not prepared to answer that question. <laughs> okay. Oh, champion team, team of the week. Really? None of our players? Last time we had some. That's disappointing, actually. I'm actually surprised. I want more angry water bottles. Maybe that's it. Like, they were expecting more drama from me. And they're disappointed. Uh, I start training in corners. Shooting no longer a weakness, so you say. Probably it can't be improved anymore, so we may as well do it just to not overexert you. Um, you know what? You do take corners, that's true. Let's have you work on that specifically. Our injury, the fractured lower legs, out for another three to six weeks more, which is in line for where we add. Yep. We have 58% decrease in injuries so far this season compared to what we would expect on average. That's nice. I think it's because a lot of the training I have queued up is a lot of technical and tactical stuff. So I think it's less physically demanding. Um, and we did also make sure to hire like a couple of physios or something right at the start of the season. Because I think we started with no physios or some. I'm not sure, but that probably helped over there. Um, isn't good enough to get the playing time he wants. I'm just going to ignore that, because that tends to just cause people to get cranky. And we might play Sock Eld more, we'll see. <clears throat> Give him something to write about. Does pissing off the press have any real downsides? I think it might, because I think it does affect, like, maybe the mood in the dressing room, or maybe, like, the audience that you might get. I think it does have impacts. If the press writes good things about you, I think it does help. But I'm not sure. Maybe it only helps your ability to get hired by other teams, which obviously we don't care about. No, I'm not going to praise. That never works out well. Uh, we are not going to be signing this person. Okay. Oh, this is a different Brown. I think I think there were two two players, two strikers named Brown. <clears throat> uh, that, or I think there was a striker, yeah, named Brown, Aaron Brown specifically. I think that someone wanted me to scout, and there were two with the same name, so I've scouted both. I suspect the other one, the one with super high potential, was the one they were excited about. But it's a quarter million dollar transfer fee. That's the thing. A lot of people are like, oh, such and such player is awesome. And they're like, yeah, they're awesome when you're playing, you know as a Premier League team and you can afford them. But that's not our situation. McAdams and McPherson set for a Somerset Park reunion. Who's McPherson? Oh, so it's the op opposition goalkeeper. Okay. <clears throat> Biggest thing when you anchor a specific player through the press, like saying they have less of a role, played terribly through press and said it to them. Okay. Fans don't care what the press say. Mm -hmm. Is this game worth it if you've never played Football Manager before? Well, I'm curious. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. The thing is, if you can get older versions of Football Manager on, like, a deep sale, they're still very good. And so it might be a good way to, like, get into it. I mean, the first Football Manager series I did was with Football Manager 17. It was great. Um, yeah, we're going to leave that be. Jack Baird we criticized last week. I'm going to give him a 
break on yelling at him. All right, so we're really hoping to smack Morton here, if we can. You know what? I probably should have changed these to a bit more of an attacking mentality ahead of time. Especially if we're going positive. Especially Thompson here. Like, really? You know what? You can you can make a few more moves. And even Mancini, actually. I probably should have done that ahead of time. Just so that they could train a bit during the week. But yeah, I think we can have a much more positive mentality going to this. <laughs> Increase attacking mentality. Yeah, I think we're good here. Are all the ex-manager games made the same team as F1 Manager? Uh, no. No. I think Sega is responsible for publishing uh, both Football Manager and Motorsport Manager, but I believe they're completely different teams involved in making it. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Is this the team we're going with today? Well, first of all, we can have an extra substitute. So let's bring... Finn back in on this. Okay. But the starting team is pretty rested, which is good. Patrick Redding still doesn't have a ton of sharpness, unfortunately, but I think it's going to be all right. Uh, Afalabi, still not super sharp, despite the fact that he played, like, most of the game. If not all the game last time? I don't know. Um, performances... It's, Murdoch hasn't been playing as well, which I guess is why there was some criticism in the press there. I mean, he has been playing below his average, and his average isn't even that great. I don't know what we can do with Murdoch. He's training as a ball-winning midfielder, which is what we're playing him as well. I mean, he may have just had a few bad games, I'm not sure. His stats are, are seem fine for ball-winning midfielder. You know, aggression and tackling, being both in a 12 is nice. Good work rate, good marking, like, you know, not, I mean, they're not stupendous, but anything double digits pretty good for our league, and anything 12 and above shows up in golden colors, or actually 11 and above shows up in golden colors, and is really good for our team. Consistency or bad match thing? Yeah, where do we see the rest of his, um, the rest of his traits? I mean, his dynamics over here. Like the high degree of strength training. He doesn't even have any additional training going on. But yeah, he's got, um... Here's the other things it says, you know, if he doesn't like a big match or, you know, those sorts of vibes. Fitness. Ugh, it's so annoying that going back doesn't actually send you back... Uh, Coach Summer? Ah, thank you. There we go. Lack of flair might limit him. I don't think a ball-winning midfielder particularly needs flair. Unlike... I like how it's a pro! Pro! Good news, everyone! He is unlikely to improve in the future. Anyway, let's go. <clears throat> Seven players complaining about lack of fuel I mean, we did make a couple of tweaks. And yeah, Maxwell sitting it out because he's red carded, so he doesn't have a choice. And Patrick Redding is in today. Let's see what we can do. I get poached if he gets better. Yeah, but we could also maybe get a transfer fee out of it. So it seems really weird. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, Mancini's nervous. Why are you nervous, man? Okay, I do like... If you carry on the last performance into this match, we'll do well. That is true. Okay, good. Seeming motivated. I was going to do maybe an individual little chat with him, uh, but so far, so good. Lower league team gets a good player for cheap. Top team can give you the players. Oh, you talk, You guys are talking about loans and things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kick off! Uh, both teams in fairly light colors, which is a little bit annoying. We are in our black and white stripe today, though, versus the blue and white stripes. I wish the away team color was maybe a little bit darker overall. They're starting in position with some nice little passing play as well. Oh, that's looking very nice. And it is interesting that we were getting a highlight right off. Jacob with some nice footwork there. Camp sending it back to the goalkeeper, Hamilton. 
Hamilton sends it deep. McGinty's there to pick it up. And the highlight cuts out. The second we get the ball, the highlight cuts out. Houston with a throw in from the corner. Chalmers back to Houston. Ooh, he's, he's very much pinned in. He does get it in front of the net, though, but it gets knocked away. But Murdoch sends it to McForty. Gets deflected outwards. Unfortunately, that is going to be it for the aggression. But Murdoch with a nice little move there. Hopefully playing a little bit better today. We'll see how that goes. Chalmers with the free kick from a decent position. Beautiful curl! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. With the camera angle, it made it very difficult to see exactly what was going on over there. But the rebound went into the melee. We actually had some good opportunities for things there. Mancini to Afalabi. Back to Patrick Redding. Who's got to send it way back over here. Mick Forty. Back to Redding. Redding doesn't seem to be uh, very eager to go as deep in the corner here as McSwell. They're in the same strategy. That's interesting. Oh, God damn it. Still, I hate that the back button is not an actual back button. So, hold on. In addition to this, which is not what I'm looking for. Oh, under development. Okay, no, he has no traits. Does McSwell have a trait that caused him to go a little further in? Pillar traits. None. No. Might be related to work rate. Might be related to some other, some other aspect of it. And I mean... You know, just a couple of highlights isn't necessarily indicative of anything. Mancini to Thompson. Thompson to Houston, who gets the kick. It goes wide, but a nice attempt there. Houston, one of his, one of our younger players. Decent winger, though, uh, with very nice potential, if I recall correctly. All right. Opposition's got to throw in. Oh, look at that little miscommunication. The player out of position. But Muirhead, Robbie Muirhead, does get a beautiful header in there. Maybe we weren't covering him enough. I don't know. I mean, figures, right? Away game against a better team, 2-0 win. Now we got a home game against a weaker team, and watch, we're going to get demolished. Although, we are on positive mentality as opposed to cautious, and that might be part of it, you know? Whoa! Maybe the mentality change isn't going to help us. And, you know, anyone can have a good day, anyone can have a bad day. Let's, uh, fucking do something about Muirhead over here. Holy crap! Don't like this. Um, we're going to keep him tighter marked is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna keep someone a little closer on him. Against better team here, United has no better team. Jeez. All right, Afalabi, up to Mancini. Sends it backwards, not really much to Patrick Redding here. I don't know why some people always use their first names and some I don't. Chalmers, moving it up the middle. Sends it up to Moffat, although he's gonna have to dump it. Mancini forced to step back a little bit, but Thompson in a nice position, isn't able to get a shot off, centers it to Moffat. Oh, a body block has to happen there. What was the little notification at the bottom? There's something over here, but I was busy reading the action. And I don't know if there's a way to, like, like see this message log. Oh, I'm sad that didn't uh, come out to anything, though. God damn it. That would have been such a nice goal. Indeed. All right. Hamilton sending it deep. Afalabi picks it up. Sends it to Mancini, although that's not much of a pass. There we go. Back to McForty. We get a bit of a reset. Okay, we get a full reset with it sending it back to the goalkeeper. McAdams. All right. Houston over here. Sends it forward to Thompson. Thompson's going to be forced to send it backwards again right away here. You know, I don't know. It's, it's feeling very strange. Mancini, who's on the other side. A nice little one-timer just to deflect it forward to Afalabi. Almost, it almost wasn't even a, a, a pass in and of itself so much as I'm just going to tactically like work the angles here a little bit. I got to review this. This was really beautiful. And Afalabi being on the board is nice to see. Chalmers sends it across to Mancini. Look at that. Just a little boop, and then Afalabi just hits the gas, beats the two defenders, and gets a beautiful angle on the goal. Oh my god, that was lovely. And we are tied up here, which is great. And we still need to get one more for the lead, because we really, we are going to be disappointed if we don't win this match. This is a match we are hoping to win. Although we sort of stole a win in the last match, so if, if we lose, I guess we kind of come out as a wash, but that's not really how it would work things. Okay. Oliver's got it, sends it back to Jacobs on the wing, centers it to camp, back to Jacobs, gets it to Allen, he's gonna try to push it into the corner. Oh! Fa oh no, my God! <laughs> I was make, this guy failed his dribble, gave the ball to, to Redding, who immediately gave it back away, and I'm really concerned as to where this is going here. Okay, it's going way too high. Holy crap. That was embarrassing from both players. Go 
scoop up the ball. Thank you very much. This is the second game, Luxel. Uh, we won the first one. Away game against a stronger team. Won it 2-0. Oh, Moffitt! Can you get it past the goalkeeper for the win? No offside or anything like that? No. Beautiful. Seventh goal of the season for Moffitt. Bring us to 2-1. We now have the lead going on. Great to see it. Let's keep up the pressure. See if we can get in one more before halftime. That would be just lovely. Let's, oh, I want to take a look at the shots over here. We are, the possession is same-ish, slight lead, which at 35 minutes, okay, statistically notable lead. Uh, pass completion, really not great on our side, which is unfortunate. We had a lot more shots on. Yeah, just a lot more opportunities, generally speaking. So there's no, there's no, no lucky goals over here. We're just getting a lot of opportunities. And uh, every now and again, they're going in. Allen centers it up. There's Muirhead again with the header. And the gets it there. Oh, there we go. Moves at the sixth position. That's probably what I missed before is one of those little lead changes. Holy shit. That was close. Yeah, up to sixth overall. We're actually tied in points with fifth place. Yeah, I know. I, we are marking him. I guess you can... It, it, the, my assistant manager is telling me to m use a specific player to mark Muirhead, but no. We've told them to be marked. Whoever wants to do it can do it. That's going to be okay. All right, Afalabi does control the ball, sends it way back to Murdoch. Murdoch to Redding. Redding centers it to Joe Chalmers, who's got to dump it immediately. Mick Forty, who sends it way back for a goalkeeper reset. Wow. All right. Over to the fullback, Houston. Centering it to Murdoch. Chalmers. Back to McGinty. Back to Mick Forty. You can tell we're a home game. You can hear those cheers every time we complete a pass. Murdoch. Another reset to the goalkeeper. What, what is going on with the tactic that is causing that? I, I'm not hating it necessarily. I'm just not sure. I mean, maybe that's that's the nature of things when you're playing a little bit more direct. A little weird that we're not keeping the pressure on. No, they're not still set to time wasting because that was just set for the one match. Time wasting is set to never. Any changes you make uh, during play um, doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. Thompson saves the ball possession. Moffitt with a beautiful sort of mid-air capture of the ball. Thompson working it way down the uh, the sideline. Back to Houston. Back to Thompson. Still looking for somewhere in the middle. Can Afalabi get a header on it? Beautiful. This is exactly, exactly what we're hoping for this game. If we're ever going to... I mean, we're... You know, I don't think we should necessarily automatically be dominating Morton, but if there was ever a game we were going to do well, it should be this one. Morton's been having a bad uh, bad time this uh, this season so far, and it is a home game, so if we were ever going to get that extra boost of energy, this would be it. Houston working it way down the wing, centers it up to Mancini, who gets a head on it. Oh my god! The goalkeeper blocks the headed thing, but the rebound goes immediately back to Mancini, who's able to boot it in. Oh my god, 4-1, just absolutely dominating performance. No mercy indeed. All right. I'm happy with the number of shots on target. Keep it up. Keep generating those goal opportunities. And, uh, I mean, eventually they go in. I, Michael Moffat is convinced. I don't know if I've ever seen convinced before. There you go. Good. Excellent. Let's say no more. Everyone's inspired and motivated. Excellent. I mean, at some point, we may need to pull back on the gas a bit just to make sure our players don't get too exhausted. But we will see. More water bottles. Yeah, water bottles for everyone. Oh, my God. That tackle to Moffat. Mancini. Ooh, who gets completely tripped up. Free kick, yeah, at least. Come on. Oh, watch us get an injury out of this bullshit somewhere along the way. We'll win, but then lose one of our key players. Oh, Ooh, bit of rain coming down. Injuries can go up a bit more in the rain. Get slippery out there. Moffat is convinced that maybe he's professional. I mean, he's 36 years old and like our key player, so he better be convinced about that. Redding with a beautiful little interception. McForty booting it up. Moffat, Moffat gets ahead, gets it in there, just fires an actual fireball from just inside the box, barely inside the box, after beating like four defenders over there. Oh my god, just a powerhouse. It's starting to feel kind of unfair at this point, actually. So in before we still lose this match. Whoop, okay, Riley tries to boot it in, but there was a few too many people. Oh, Leon with a nice angle there, back to Riley. Free kick. Was an offside? Was an offside. Okay. Benning going to throw a toss to Murdoch. Gets to Mancini. Mancini, ooh. That was yeah, that could have been uh, delivered a little bit more accurately. Could have actually been a goal quite easily there, honestly. Oh, camp. Oh, sends it wide. So we're not, we're not going to get the clean sheet. And they did go up that first score. I mean, they, they had first blood at 14 minutes there, and I, I started to get real nervous. 
real nervous. All right, Houston with a throw in. Chalmers, back to Houston. Chalmers, oh, gets blocked. Murdoch's gonna be able to pick it up. We're gonna need some subs, especially for anyone who might lack sharpness at this point. Four goal lead, twice as hard to keep as two goal lead. Moffitt, oh! Delivered to the hand of Hamilton. Take a quick look over here. Um, having a storming game, yeah. 9.5 performance, not used to seeing that. Uh, Joe Chalmers not having such a great time. Well, I mean, we'll probably sub out Afalabi soon just because he is starting to get a little bit tired. But I guess we don't need to rush anything. No one's no one's terribly exhausted yet. No one's got any cards yet on either side, I don't think. No. Oh, Mancini. Tries to make another bolt move forward, but it's not quite delivering there. You need to be more economical with your goals. No point scoring them all in all in one game. Right? Yeah, we need to spread them out between games. Oh, McGinty does get the ball, although... Allen tries to boot it from a distance. He had really no choice there. There was someone right on him. If he didn't take the shot there, he's probably going to lose the ball regardless. Jacobs. Sends it to Allen. Back to Jacobs. Kind of pinned in there. Trapped in the corner. There we go. Allen to Oliver. Oh, that was a beautiful, beautiful chance by the opposition there. McAdams, though, was able to read that move beautifully. Just get in position. Uh, and he never, he, in the end, didn't have to try too hard to stop it. But that was, I would say, entirely vision. Hello, Mick 40. Keep up this pressure. Keep them pinned in there in. Houston gets Thompson, Ooh, who just misses the pickup there, unfortunately. Back to Houston. Sends it across to Afalabi. He doesn't get his head on it, but Redding is in there. He can't quite get it going. Afalabi to Chalmers, who boots it from outside, but it goes just wide, and that's going to be okay. Don't worry, you're not managing the Finnish national hockey team. Only they could lose from this position. Ouch, Mugu! Damn, have you just recently been burned? Tell me, who hurt you? Um, Deserves his goal, excellent game. Yeah, we, we need to do some substitutions over here. Um, I still think Finn's got a lot of potential for us, and I would like to see him get a little bit more uh, playtime. So I think, yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll drop out Patrick Redding here. Although he's still got tons of energy, actually. Yeah, so I don't know about that. Let's bring Mark McKenzie in. For you know what, for Alpha Lobby. well, it's it's going to be one of those like um, one of those substitutions where you know the fans are going to be clapping him off like you know what a match, what a match, what a match, what a match. Let's just not tire you out too much if we can. Mancini as well starting to get a little tired, which again is is to be very expected uh, given his position. It's uh, very active. We'll bring uh, we'll bring uh, Daro O'Connor in, um, and we'll we'll leave it unchanged the the strategy and and see what he can do. Let's do a double sub. Is it a little early for a double sub? Maybe it is, actually. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this up with McKenzie. That's going to be fine. Oh, Muirhead, McAdams. Yeah, ever since we did turn on the uh, the tighter marking of Muirhead, it does seem to have made a pretty big difference there. Or maybe they just got lucky, but he, he had a few big opportunities. I'm actually surprised he didn't score two or even three times. Your head to Allen McAdams, though, with a beautiful dive. I gotta say, that was definitely going in. Speaking of ice hockey, any stomping for... I haven't watched any Olympics coverage yet. Probably should watch more. Or watch any, actually. Would be nice. Okay, we got ten minutes left. Um, let, let's just sub in these low-sharpness players and try to get them. Uh, just a little bit of practical um, experience here. Odair. For Mancini. Ten minutes of play time. What do Dorbson said? Although I think they did it twice. Can't remember the other year too. Oh, speaking of ice hockey. Oh yeah, that. Or was there something else? That five to one to six to five is a classic Swedish comeback story from the World Championship in Ice Hockey back in 2006. Really? So Finland had a five-one lead and ended up losing six-five to Sweden. Wow. Oh, Moffat can't get it there for the goal kick. Although I think we're gonna get the final whistle any second now. There it goes. I mean, beautiful. I, all the players, all of you are allowed to throw water bottles today. It's not just going to be me. We're all going to get involved there. Oh, last minute yellow. That's got to be frustrating for the uh, opposition manager. Nice work, everyone. That was good. I mean, that was a little subdued, but there you go. Yeah, the ass man does seem to have good picks over there. Awaiting media reaction. Dun, 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 dun. So there we go. Just like that, we are now sixth overall. We're tied in points with Dumb Furlan. We're just down one on gold diff over here. 
Uh, they have they have played one fewer games though, so most certainly they're going to book a few points over here. And Wraith's actually played five games amazingly here, so they'll they might get past us too. But still, this is a very very good. Very good situation. Uh, we are playing Partrick Thistle next as an away game, and they are currently second in the league. Lassie Palumbi on form. Great stuff. I mean, he had a 9.6 rating. If you can't praise with a 9.6, listen, um, you know, really plays how they played last match and you scored. Keep up the good work. All right. Oh, his morale was already maxed. Why even bother telling him anything? All right, listen. Like the talk points. Battle against relegation reaction. Match relationship with Gus McPherson, who's the manager at Morton. All right, let's attend this press conference. Gus McPherson has suggested that despite your team being tipped for relegation this season, you can make a good go of staying up. You agree? Oh. The other, the other. Um... The other manager is actually saying good things about us. Here, if we're, I'm actually going to go negative here. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to try to enjoy ourselves. Not enjoy yourselves. Like I, said, I don't want to say it'll be fine. I'm going to say it's not going to be easy. Screw it. Bang table. Bang table. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to try to enjoy ourselves at least. It doesn't matter what I do. The press hates me. It was really impressive victory. Some managers might try to give the team a rest after training like that. Uh, a rest from training after that. Uh, you know what? And it's important to strike the right balance. Players deserve time off, but only when it fits in our schedules. Must be delighted with such an emphatic win. I'm absolutely delighted. We were terrific. No, you know what? It's always pleasing when we go out and execute our game plan. I'm very satisfied. Was Afalabi frustrated by your decision to take him off when he wasn't on for a hot trick? <sighs> yeah, felt confident the game was won. We have some important fixtures coming up for Jonathan needs to be fresh for. Fuck this press, man. How do you get along with Gus? Well, I love him now. We have great mutual respect for one another. Okay, couple of the relationships have gone up. That's good. Notable highlights, down thumb. Gus McPherson suggested, we're well, not going to be easy, we're going to enjoy ourselves at least. I mean, I guess because I went contrary to what it... Man, I don't know anymore. Stop trying to predict people, I guess. This game is so realistic, the British press really is the worst ever! <laughs> uh, Jamati to enjoy season despite relegation fears. McPherson ignores... Relegation mind games. <sighs> All right. <laughs> wow, this press, it really is like, it really is the press twisting just about anything you say to any narrative they want. It doesn't matter what you say, they're gonna find a way to make it terrible and bad. Shame you didn't have to deal with the press and motorsport manager. Well, that's okay. It's not like the press in F1 is, you know, unfair or like ridiculous or anything like that, right? No, that would never happen. All right. Um, I think I'm still happy with the uh, the training that we set up for this week. Still working on the bonding. How are team dynamics? Team's collective mental state slightly disappointing at the moment. I don't know why things have been so bad, but yeah, we've got win-win-lose, win-win. That's pretty good. Two players were unhappy. Turnover of playing staff. I mean, admittedly, there were a lot of loans and things like that. Yeah, he's pissed about the harsh team talk. Yeah, I was pretty pissed at the time, though. Uh, so, Partrick Thistle away game, definitely a more challenging one. So, look, we're still going to play the 4-4-3, but we'll go back to a cautious mentality over here. Um, another... Oh, I like McFordy and McGinty starting to play well together. That's nice. I think I still want the fullbacks to be on support mode. That's going to be okay. We are going to bring McSwell in. Uh, 
and a little bit of something, something like this. They're Mick buddies now. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll keep you on the attack mentality over here. No, you know what? Never mind. I'll go support. It's not like you still didn't generate tons of chance. Although, you did score like fucking crazy that game, but it might be a little misleading. Okay, attack, attack, and Mancini can be an attack as well. That's going to be all right. Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Oh yeah, the purple people are, are people who are here on loan. Must become some motorsport. The FI is really good at screwing themselves up, so no wonder the press is pretty harsh there. <laughs> That's true. Uh, all right, Patrick Thistle. Yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. It's gonna be rough. Purple people are rares. Yes, they're rares. They're epic items. All right, let's uh, let's attend the training meeting this time. Uh, Sockheld's mentoring unit positive effect on him. Okay. Balance. He's still in the other player's hierarchy. Or sorry, that that's fine. He's just not. He's still in a secondary social group, which is unfortunate. Tommy Alloy benefited from individual training. Good. Excellent. Impressed by his progress and impressed by the progress over here. Okay. Overall training going pretty well. Excellent. Uh, we have good backing from the squad right now. Get along well with you. That's nice to hear. And Dave Timmons, who I suspect... Yeah, he's the... Well, he's the ass man of... Um, oh, he's my assistant manager. But yeah, he's been impressed by his form, and I would say so. I mean, yeah. All right. No, we don't need to schedule a talk with him. It's going to be fine. Two people working to coach and team board. Will you have a total of four? Oh, we can have some more under-18s. We, we don't have any under-18 players, though. There's no reason to invest in the under-18s. No, we'll just end that. That's going to be fine. Because our um, Dev Center under-18s... We have literally one player in the under-18s over here. Well, I guess two with Paul Smith. Is he away on loan? Yeah, he's out on loan. And then Kille over here is the only actual players. All these gray players are not real players over here. They are just, they're just fillers that are auto-generated by the game to fill in the gap. So I'm not worried about that. Until we get a youth intake cycle, we're not going to pay too much attention to the under-18s. We get more youth players like actual players. Yeah, so um, once a year, there is a youth intake. So we get ran like we get newly generated players uh, that, can, uh, that can come in. And of course, we can always go and recruit people for that team, but... Okay, Nick McAllister is no longer concerned about agreed playing time. I believe he's happy to have that. Because we changed him. I think um, he had been set to regular and we pulled him back to like slightly less regular. And the irony is that McAllister might get more play now because we are once again playing some fullbacks and stuff. And in fact, here's an interesting question. How do you compare to Jordan? Yeah, so you're a little bit stronger over there. So now that you're being less of a punk, well, we're going to go ahead and bring you in and hope that works out okay. Although Houston has been playing quite well for us. Um, someone else I might want to sit instead. I don't know. We can just cycle. It's going to be okay. Mick defense is a go. Yes, the full Mick defense has been a um, uh, activated. That is a good point. All right. Oh, yeah. We did drop to seventh, I think, as someone else played their games. Youth players basically regens from professionals that retire, though, so if you're lucky and scout well, you can end up with a Lionel Messi regen. Really? Although I think it uh, also factors in your youth training, like your youth facilities and things like that. Sean McGinty's been injured! Okay, tight hamstring. Okay, that's not so bad. He might even be ready for the game, but if we have to swap him out, it's not dealing into world. The minor injury. Transfer close. Transfers? I don't know. Well, we don't have anything like that going on, so. When big teams call their prospects near the end of June, you usually find some decent youth players to sign. Well, that's true, too, yeah. Because they might not be good enough for the big teams, but they might be great for us. This might be... The first of the month is usually a fairly long processing time, especially if there's some transfer window stuff at the same time. Hello, Lewis Richardson. Oh, you're from Burnley! We could get you on loan. I think, again, I, as far as I can tell, our league rule says we can only have four players on loan. Which is what we've got.
Yeah, maximum of four domestic based players allowed on loan in in a season slash at one time. So I think even releasing one of our loaners, I don't think would give us more uh, more space for that. So we'll just acknowledge this. It's good information to have going forward. All right, Partrick Thistle opposition report. I mean, so yeah, it will be tough to beat. I expect that is very true. Monthly finances, so the balance is dropping currently. Profit loss is negative, which is unfortunate. Yeah, we'll do some, some swaps in a second here. Yeah, so Partrick Thistle, a fair, <laughs> a very significant favorite. Wow. Uh, huh. Shanklin sings praises. Oh, really? All right, sings Moffat's praises. All right. Air month, three month. Picked up some mixed personality traits from Mention Group, collecting some positive influence as well as some negative ones. Now appears to be a more ambitious player, since loyalty has grown. Doesn't seem to handle be handling pressure quite as well. Well, that's a bit unfortunate. We might, at some point, we may want to redo our mentoring groups over here to see what we can do. But Joe Chalmers is fairly professional. He's leading group two over here. So hopefully we're going to end up with more fairly professional players over here. Um, there's, yeah, fairly loyal. I don't think used to be a thing. Resolute, I think, is the strong trade over here, so Jack Baird is is trying to spread this to the rest of the squad and become Resolute, which would be very nice. I know you have converted Sam Shanklin from chess to football. I don't know any of those references. I don't know about Sam Shanklin, the chess player, I guess. Bum, bum, bum. So yeah, this is going to be a tough one. It will be kind of unfortunate if our final match of the day is a loss, but we have gotten Alan Miller up to friendly. Although, well, I don't know why it's yellow. Maybe yellow is just the color of friendly. And then, yeah, going all the way to green, perhaps. All right, let's do the press conference. Actually, a good question is, do people enjoy watching the press conferences? If you do, then we'll definitely keep doing them. If you think they're stupid, then maybe we won't. What do you make of Ian McKellen's steadfast commitment to possession football? Um, I'm playing well. We know we're in for a long, hard battle when we face off again. I think I like this idea because it's going to be, you know, we're kind of downplaying our chances over here. Oh, people like him? <laughs> they're stupid and enjoy watching them. Excellent. Okay. I think I like this idea. I don't know if this is going to help to, like, downplay expectations, but I think it's the right way to go. Use the fake smiling positive attitude to the press. <laughs> Are you concerned about the scale of the task when you come up against Ian McCall's Patrick Patrick Thistle? They got a tremendous manager, someone I looked up to. It's gonna be really interesting to see go up against them. I'm not gonna hide the fact it'll be a tough match given how Ian's gotten playing. Doesn't mean I don't think we can get a good result. Sure. Grenock Morton will want to show that they can avoid the drop season by winning their match against Arbroath. This is a game you expect them to win. Um Honestly, probably not. I mean, we're talking about the 10th rated team versus the 4th rated team. I don't really want to talk shit, but... Yeah, I think uh, Arbroath... I have no idea how this is supposed to be pronounced, by the way. Will be tough opposition, so it could be a trickster, tricky fixture for them. I mean, let's be honest. that That's the situation. It's going to be tricky. All right. What do you think Michael Moffat can handle the current scrutiny of his performances? <sighs> I mean... There's a lot of demand on him because he is, like crushing it you know what i've been impressed by his focus and professionalism the pressure is helping him take his game to the next level our broth Ar okay after a while you will have heard all the questions it's like that's actually real life yeah uh we'll see uh mancini stay on air at a permanent basis well the problem is his his sticker price is way too fucking high Basically, I want to keep him around for as long as possible, but there's no way we can afford the transfer. He'd have to go out on a free. Interested in a long way to go talk before there's any details. I don't know, right now we're happy to have him on loan. I don't know. Maybe some gesture roll out the press. I think the gestures tend to um, amplify certain... Uh, 
the certain vibes. That's that tends to be how it works in the press conference. It almost acts like a little bit of a multiplier for certain moves, which can make positive results more positive or negative ones worse. Here, let's try and endure ourselves through. We're interested, but it's a long way to go before we can talk about that in details. Any reaction from Sean Seen Dyke in response to Air being linked with one of his players? I don't know, he's not predictable. I don't know. All right, well, it's not maybe as bad as it has been in the past. No real changes, but as it gets, it's okay. Hey, Planko Stills! They should read you your Miranda rights before the, every press conference. Everything you say can and will be held against you. <laughs> Sean Dyke being the Burnley manager, I think it's related to that loan idea. Oh, I see. Oh, well. No comment over there. Okay, I think we started the stream on a C with the board. Now we're up to a B. We've had to, we've had a good run lately, which is nice. They're still pissed about the 4-1 loss. I can't blame them. I was pretty pissed as well. Okay. Tomorrow next match. The squad's possibly looking okay. Win game, board happy. Yep. That's all you gotta do. Listen, if you wanna do well, all you have to do is win. You know, it's not it's not complicated, right? <clears throat> Remember to use gestures in those press conferences. Well, the one gesture I really want to use, for some reason, isn't in the list. I don't know. It's weird that way. Uh, Aaron Muirhead still recovering from that. Sean McGinty, who had the pull pulled hamstring, I think. Looks like he's capable. All right, tactical meeting. See, yeah, my assistant manager wants me to go from cautious to positive. Listen, dude, this is such a stronger team. Like, come on. I'm not going to do it. I I'll go with his opposition instructions. I think that's going to be okay. Sean McGinty wanted to draw the attention to the fact McForty and Sean McGinty, useful partnership. Yes, indeed. So I would really like to play them, assuming he's okay. Um, and it looks like he's fine. Actually, no injury reported over there. That's good news. Oh, Muirhead is down to orange instead of red, which I think means he might be able to start some rehab. General rehab. There you go. General rehab, of course, is uh, well known for winning the uh, Battle of Second Strasbourg. Just trying to pick a random European city. <clears throat> General rehab. Um, <laughs> General rehab, exactly, Theodorpson. <laughs> and yeah, I like that they're they're starting to work as a pair. That's actually really good. We do need to stick with a a particular tactic uh, as much as possible and a regular set of starters if we want to build more of those relationships. But it would be really nice if more of these little mini squads start to work. Quill's assistant wants to change the entire squad. Can't be a good sign. Yeah, he's 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 weird. General Rehab, known for winning the battle of Sprained Ankle. There you go. All right, let's go. So Houston Redding taking a seat. McAllister and McSwell coming in over here. A little bit of opposition instruction. Overall, people are pretty pleased with the situation. That's nice to see. Only one person, oh, two people, concerned with lack of familiarity with the tactic. But overall, everything's looking really, really quite good. Joke reminds me of how I met your mother. Never, never watched it. A couple episodes here and there. You know, like I know, I know the vibe, but I never watched the series. Mm -hmm. The thing with uh, with a lot of typical sitcoms is you you have to like. It's I think it's the case with any particular style of show. If you're not used to working up, watching a particular style of show, certain aspects and tropes of those styles uh, take a little while for your brain to get used to. So, for example, if you haven't watched a lot of, I'm trying to remember the term for like the comedies. Uh, or the, the filming style, where it's like uh, the, the single camera style, uh, which is sort of in a room versus the on a set style, like the three cameras type of vibe. And the three camera type set style, A, looks different, B, tends to use like laugh tracks and things like that. And so if you're just not used to it, it like takes you out. So every now and again, I try to sit down and watch like How I Met Your Mother or something, and it just takes me out of it because I'm not used to watching that style of show. But so what I have to do is set aside a block of time, I think, to just binge a few of those type of like um, set-based comedies 
I don't want to say sitcom because sitcoms, like there's a wide range of sitcoms, including things that use very different uh, shooting styles, right? Like Scrubs is a sitcom, but that's an example of the single camera uh, style that's not on a, um, that doesn't have that soundstage vibe and doesn't have a laugh track. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the thing. People criticize shows with laugh tracks and things, and I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with it. But if, it, if you don't normally watch them and then suddenly you watch one, it'll pull you out. Just like if you're not used to watching animation shows, like animated shows, just the sound quality from the fact that it's people recording in a sound booth rather than microphones picking something up, you know, on a set sounds so weird that it can throw you off. But then if you watch a lot of animated shows, then you don't notice it the same way. All right. Bum, 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 bum. Please don't mention Scrubs. I've rewatched it again all eight seasons. The final season of Scrub, if you actually look at it as a completely different spinoff, is not a bad show. It's just that the 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 the, um, the network just didn't have the guts to just call it a separate show. They're like, no, we'll call it Scrubs again, and we'll awkwardly try to sh shoehorn in JD. No, come on, no, no. I liked all the rest of it just fine. Honestly, the bits without JD in that last season of Scrubs, the better ones. Anyway. I want you to pick up where we left off last time. I mean, yes, it would be great to get another win. I'm honestly not sure I expect it, but you know what? The ass man hasn't really failed us in here so far. Okay. Not as inspired, not as motivated. Here, make a difference. Make a difference. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, all right. Not bad. Call it rescrub. I mean, technically it was like Scrubs colon medical school or something was like the part of the title card, but that's not how they, they worked it. So I think I think that's it. I think they could have had an amazingly successful spin-off if they had just had the guts to call it a spin-off and treat it that way. I think they, they shot themselves in the foot. All right, here we go. So we are, um, even though it's an away game, we are in our uh, white and uh, black stripes, just because I guess they're so contrasting from what, uh, I, I always want to call it Patrick Thistle, but it's Patrick Thistle. Um, and yeah, so we are going to play the Cautious Mentality because they're 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 doing much better this season and they do have a heck of a lot stronger players on paper. Well, McAllister just that like, gets the ball just punted into his head there and he's able to stop that uh, that offense although they're back on it. We're only a minute and a half in. It's their second highlight. Don't like this. Turner to Smith, Smith to McIver, to High to Tiffany, gets it wide to Akinala, who centers it up to Tiffany who's got a really terrible shooting. That actually got sent out into the parking lot over there. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Proper Ouija team. Particle Thistle. No, this is Patrick. Pronouncing it wrong. No, it's Partrick, isn't it? Where do I see there? Par. Oh, it's Partick. Partick. Wow. All right. Partick. I'll just call them Patrick, just because. All right, Smith the high. Wow, their offense is definitely firing. Tiffany's got another opportunity there, but who is that that tucked in a little a little boot to block? I'm not sure who that was, but uh, thank goodness for them. All right, 15 minutes in. Honestly, if we can hold them to like a nil-nil. Ooh, free kick from Tiffany. Oh, gets headed away by the line there. You don't see that often. Shot too low, although they've got an offense as a result of it. Nelson gets it over to Tifoni, who's got lots of room, but McAdams, who Tifoni sent directly at the goalkeeper. That was that was probably that was a goal there that should have probably happened, except he decided to send it directly in the goalkeeper's hands. If we can somehow end this nil-nil, I'm gonna be thrilled. Like that that was be good. If we can hold it off to a draw in this game, I think we should consider that to be a huge success in particular um, particular situation here. My casting skills for this game has improved. It is a lot of fun to get in there and do the casting for it. So, uh, McCorney, McCorney's taking a knock. How bad is it? Well, it says he's recovering from it. Well, let's let's give him past halftime and see if uh, after he takes 10 minutes in the dressing room, if he might bounce back from that. We'll see. Been the better team here. Yeah, I don't really do much, but all right. No one's starting to get stressed, which is good. Oh, they're doing a sub. Now, let's take a look. Still recovering from knock. He's not doing too badly. We're going to want to sub soon for Mick 40. I don't know. Maybe we should just bring in Baird now. I was hoping he'd recover a little bit more at, in during the halftime. What do we think?
Now? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Make sure he's gonna be okay. I don't think he's gonna I don't think he's gonna come away with an injury or anything like that. Um but yeah, let's uh let's make sure essential defenders are still going okay. Baird's gonna come in with lots of energy. Not a ton of sharpness. And actually his morale's maybe not even as uh, high as I want. Listen. Um Pump fist. Make the difference. Make me proud. Doesn't care. Alright. Go, go, go. Aflabity Moffitt. Back to Chalmers. Ooh! As I say, he he was forced to pass there. He's getting sandwiched in and unfortunately could not get the line to Thompson. They just had two defenders in the way to inter intercept that. That's too bad. They've got double yellow cards on their side. That's crazy. This go uh, this referee, we did see he gives an average of three yellows and no reds per match. So those are still definitely happening. Um, oh, wait. We've got a yellow? Oh! Just like that we do. Yeah. Um... Deserved his yellow card. I don't think I want to do a second sub yet, but I think there's a good chance we're going to pull you fairly quickly. The triangle defense and annoying tactics face. Oh, Thompson gets it there. Murdoch sweeps in around some of the central defenders. Thompson to Chalmers, back to Thompson, to Moffat, who doesn't have a shot off here. Chalmers to Thompson, now he's pinned in. McAllister over on the wing, that's what we want to see. Oh, back to Chalmers. He's got to force a little bit of a reset over here. 57 minutes in, Chalmers to Moffat. Moffat's got some defenders in the way, though. He can get to McAllister, he's got a bit of an angle to move it forward. He boots it across to Afalabi, who heads it towards the goalkeeper. But that distance, the goalkeeper had all the time in the world to spot what was happening there. That wasn't going to lead to anything, almost certainly. McGinty gets the ball there to Chalmers, who can send it to quite a few players. McGinty, I'm surprised he didn't send it out to the wing. McGinty just sends it deep forward to Thompson, who gets his head on to Moffat. Centers it off Lobby. Mancini, oh, finds a bit of a window there. Oh, I gotta say, that was a beautiful little slide to defect the ball away there. Because I was starting to think, like, their, their back line is really hard to beat. And somehow we found an angle. Wow. Their expected goals is, is higher. They, we may have gotten lucky in that they haven't scored on us yet. But uh, not too shabby. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do this sub now. So that's two. We've got 30 minutes of regular play left, so really got to sit on this last sub. All right, Moffat moving up big time. Lots of red shirts around him, but he's just bringing it deep, 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 deep. What's going to happen when this guy retires? Jeez. Centers it up. Chalmers gets a head on towards the goalkeeper. Unfortunately, that is it. Stone's able to just pick it up. Says can't hold on to the ball. Lots of things happening. Offsides. Okay, we got a throw in here. Sock held to Thompson, who centers it with the header. Oh, I thought we were going to maybe re-pick it up there. All right. Baird's going to keep up the pressure again. Sends it over to Afalabi. Can't get his head on it. Tafoni's going to be able to start a counterattack from, from, from Patrick. Oh, no. Mixwell just picks it up after kind of a failed dribble there is what it looked like. That wasn't even a tackle, I thought. Murdoch. Backwards, sends it deep to Afalabi, who's got an angle to run up up the wing. No, he sends it backwards to Mancini. Mancini's pinned in, though. Afalabi, I think, should have just kept moving forward there, I, although I realize he's not a winger. Whoa, McSwell! He looks like he, he tripped up a little bit there, trying to get the ball. But Chalmers gets the interception, sends it back forward. Moffat to Thompson, ahead of defenders, has to send it in from a far distance. Oh, that was always going to be a tricky one to get in, but I appreciate the effort. 5-2 on our shots now. 20 minutes left of the match. Let's take a look at uh, our situation. Ooh, I don't like that Thompson is currently nervous. He's not our most tired player, though. Chalmers, well, he is playing in... Well, he's not playing in the Mez position, actually. I don't like that Thompson is nervous. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about sideline shouts, because they never seem to work out too well. Afalabi is very tired. Not like McKenzie is like a god tier. Well, part of it is the deep line forward that they're not particularly pleased with. What we could do is we could just, um, we do a little swap. Put Thompson on this side. And then McKenzie's a little bit more comfortable playing as the pressing forward. I don't know. Is that a car part behind the goal? Yeah, I know, right? I agree. I don't like how tired Mancini is, but it's not like we have a really good replacement for him. Unless we switch to a 4-4-2, and then we can... But we don't have that many subs, and I don't want to make too drastic a change.
What do we want to do? I don't like to make Aginti's tired. Our entire midfield is tired. That might actually be the biggest limiter here. The fact that our entire midfield is kind of burnt out. I know. Let's just bring in O'Connor. All right. 15 minutes left in regulation. Akinola to high. High to Smith. Rudden. We do have a lot of walls there. But they've got the flanks a little bit open. Back to Rudden, but he doesn't have an angle. Oh, but that! I was going to say, would that have been offside? No, it's going to be tipped in for a corner. Jeez. That is a little scary. All right. Tifoni with the corner kick. Murdoch gets a head on it, deflects it out. It actually looks like Mancini is going to be able to scoop it up despite being exhausted. He's able to beat everyone else about it. Okay. At this point, again, still very, very pleased if we just end up with a nil-nil draw at this point. It's going to be okay. Ten minutes left. Full kick. Five and change. McAdams sends it deep. Unfortunately, no one there for us to pick up, so they're going to be able to start a new offense. Ooh, bit of a run through. Rodden gets it wide to Hendry. Oh, Hendry with a kind of a misplayed pass. Sockeld sends it forward. Moffat heads it forward to Thompson, who's got a bit of a run. He's got plenty of opposition. It's unlikely he's going to get a proper shot on. But at this point, I like the time-wasting. Tries to cross it in, but does get it deflected away by the defenders. But makes swell to Murdoch, to Mancini. We've got another um, offense going on. Afalabi going to try to cross it up. Mancini, he's in the box. No, sends it back to McSwell. Just boots it forward. Oh, Thompson's going to be able to keep up the offense, though. Up to Sockel, back to Thompson. Mancini, can he get his head on it? Oh, my God. Stone is forced to do a diving save. It would have been so insane for us to go up 1-0 right there. Again, I'm going to be fine with a draw. But if we could sneak in a win here and absolutely steal a win, wow, that would have been incredible. What a beautiful set of moves. Ooh, they're, they're definitely getting an offense there. Running is going to beat our defenders. He's forced to fire from quite far away. Luckily, one of our defenders, I don't know which one it was, was just starting to cut in front of him. So he's forced to fire there from a long distance. Two minutes left. They've got the ball on our end. I don't like this. Hi to Hattie! Seems to happen. We get scored on past the 90-minute mark more than anything else. Ah. Don't, don't make it 2-0. Don't make it 2 0. Not like this. Not like this. Are they are they wasting time now? They might have been, actually. They might have changed to a time wasting thing. Alright. That's probably it now that we got the goal kick. It's called being FM. The game just likes doing that. Oh, that is a bit of a heartbreaker. But I, I feel like the players played well. I mean. Unlucky boys would have nice to win there, but it wasn't to be. I mean, I think that's kind of fair. Okay. All right. Some anxious players, but overall, to throw a water bottle. I mean, here's the thing. I would like to throw the water bottle in um, camaraderie with the team. You know, with with sort of empathy and sympathy. Like, throw the water bottle and like, God! God, can you believe that bullshit team? Oh, everyone throw a water bottle. Blah, 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 kind of vibe, you know? It's like, not throw a bottle because I'm mad at my players. But I'm mad for them. <laughs> Peel the label off the water bottle in frustration. Exactly. Oh, all right. Let's attend the press match. Okay. Uh, were you half expecting the result to go against you like that, given how highly you spoke of Ian McKellen? Um, well, there's a lot of text. Can't say I wasn't a little pessimistic about our chances. Ian's got a good side, but I was pleased with how my bias... Co I mean, yeah! I think we were unlucky with the result. I think this is fair. I mean, I was pessimistic about our chances, but I was really happy with how things went, and we're a bit unlucky. Done. Uh, once again, a late goal has ruined your day. Tell me about it, Connor. How will that moment affect the team? Players can take a lot of positive out of the performance. Very close to getting a result. It wasn't particularly hard. I don't think our play merited that result. No, I'm just going to go with this one. I like that. More disappointed with the performance? No, man. We're just unlucky. What do you think Partick Thistle's late goal... Do you think the late goal was deserved? I mean... Yeah, we, they were lucky we were a better team by far. No, they had much higher expected goal, much more shots on goal. Um, I thought we were good value to at least take something from the match, so I'm disappointed. There we go. I think this is fair. 
I thought we were good value to at least take something from the match. I was hoping to come out of it with a point for a draw uh, by the end there. So I am disappointed with how things unfolded. Fans clearly felt you should have taken Sean McGinty off today. Why did you leave him out there while he was underperforming? I guess he was underperforming the 6.3, but... I don't know. I saw heart, passion, desire every second he was on the field. But after all, make a tough to substitute a player. Wouldn't have been a simple case of like for like change. That wasn't something we could do. So this would be admitting that he didn't win, play terribly well, but that I didn't have a really good substitution set up for him. Yeah, I'll say that. So I'm almost like, well, fans, I'm not saying you were wrong, but you know, there were other reasons why I couldn't do it. You know, it's like how I talk to Twitch chat. I'm not saying you guys are wrong, but here's all the reasons why you're wrong. <laughs> Friendship water bottle. Nice banana. <laughs> if I were a coach, I'd have beer bottles instead of water bottles. Wow. <laughs> you don't deserve goals, you make them. I do like that, Lodger, and that's quite good. <laughs> Riot. <laughs> ah, oh, it's always good to insult your, your the, the fans. Would you agree that Jake Hasty was the best player on the pitch today? Well, he was the only one who scored. But no, I'm not going to say he was the best. You know, he played well, but others matched him too. I mean, come on. Okay. So Paul Grant, the Air Football Times, they they don't like the local team for whatever reason. Often negative about it. Oh, okay, but he's gone up. Our relationship has improved overall over here. So, you know, maybe there's hope. Maybe we're navigating those press conferences a little better. Who knows? Okay, what's our situation here? Our next match is in seven days. We don't have enough time to do another match on stream. So we're, we can talk about some of our strategies and our planning. We did three matches today. And honestly, um... I think this 4-3-3 is working out beautifully. Um, yeah, I think it's working out quite nice. Turns out this play, this play up the center, which is mostly what we're doing as a result of this, is working out fairly well with us. I think the three strikers are doing wonderful things. Uh, what I also like is that we have decent depth with strikers. We do have a few uh, to, to sub in. I mean, McKenzie um, is, you know, certainly not as strong, but he's not bad. And honestly, Sackheld's pretty good. Like, if we reorder this, for example, if I resort it this way, and in a sense, we've got these three strikers. It so happens that Sackheld can actually play a few roles down the right-hand side, so he's got some flexibility there. But really, we've got three extra strikers. We have six strikers on our team, which is one of the reasons I wanted a three-striker uh, configuration over here. That's quite good. Um, we the, the biggest issue is that sometimes we, we you run out of subs for the center midfielders and maybe even the central defenders over here. Although, again, with the central defenders, we can, or the central midfielders, we can switch to something like a 4-4-2 uh, to alleviate the need for the central ones and then run some wingers instead. So we can flip sort of back and forth, especially in a multi-game kind of thing. I mean, with only three substitutions, it's not like you, you're critically hurting if you don't have subs for every position because short of people who can play a million different positions a lot of times you're not going to have enough subs for everything else um one thing that might be interesting is if with mancini if we could work his stamina he's only got a 10 it's actually on its way up and if we could keep it if we can increase the stamina by another point or two just to keep him a little bit more fired up through the entire match i think that would be the most valuable thing so i'm kind of curious oh he's focusing on corners he is our corner taker so actually, I think that's not a terrible idea. Knox ball past opponents is being learned. That does seem to be working out really well for him. Um, oh, he's currently training his deep line playmaker. Let's actually, we are actually playing you, sorry, as the Medzala over here, probably mostly in the support situation. Oh, that doesn't want to trade a lot of things, but that's going to be okay. Yeah, position roll duty is awkward in this tactic. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess he's got he's got potential for it. Doesn't necessarily mean he's currently comfortable with it. That's weird because it's a four star thing for him, but super awkward for position role duty. Why is that? I mean, entire midfield is short on stamina. That game. Yeah. Now in away games, they do tend to degrade faster. Um, so that's part of the one of the big things with the away game. In fact, I don't know how many things being home versus away actually get like actually come up as part of the game engine i think their mentality is a little bit better when they're at home and i think their condition um doesn't degrade as quickly when they're at home his training rating has been very good which is nice to see is he not used to the position you're playing him in i mean yeah and that's the thing i'm not sure like he's natural in midfield center and 
Of the roles and duties that he can play in that position, the highest rated is the Metzala, which is what he's doing. So to me, it feels like that should be his biggest thing, but maybe um, he's not used to playing this position with this particular tactic, and that's where it is? I don't know. When he had Mark Kerr in the midfield. I have memories about that. But, hmm. The injury risk currently is really high because he's, he's very, very tired over here, but it automatically set him to half intensity training for now. Um, yeah, the big thing is when we have a lot of matches close together, but this next one seven days away should still should be vaguely all right. Okay. So yeah, overall it's okay. If we are gonna go scouting for more things, I think it would be nice if we could pick up another really solid, just straight up central midfielder. That's probably the biggest demand that we could do, because we do have we do have some people for fullbacks. We do have some people for central defenders. You know, they may have to be slid in and out. Um, when we do get Muirhead back, it's going to be really helpful because he's perfectly pl fine playing any of these central positions from midfield back to defense. So Muirhead's really, really useful for us, and it's really disappointing that he isn't around. Uh, so hopefully his physio is gonna work out okay and he'll be back relatively soon. And then even if he's just sitting in substitution, he becomes a great substitute spot for lots of different spots. Uh, so that's gonna help us out a lot. Cool needs a proper guy with six lungs in the midfield, yeah. For some reason, positions and such are often reset to zero when you start the game, which is why things really start to pick up once you start season two. First season is very much training, getting used to things season, which is annoying, but what it is, okay. And I think that's one of the reasons when you're doing your training, you want to try to find as many um, as many things to add to the schedule. Well, first of all, um, especially when we're near the game over here, I want to make sure to keep working on the two activities that increase the, um, uh, the team cohesion, which is the uh, community outreach and team bonding. Um, and yeah, I want it fairly close to the game because these are low intensity. So it'll help with getting rested before we go into it. Um, but yeah, the other thing you want to do when you're setting up these various things, you want to find the ones, well, the ones that add tactical familiarity, yes, for sure. And the other thing is the ones that give you your individual roles opportunity. What usually happens is this, so for example, this training here is the attacking squad is going to be working on these various things over here, but the defenders and the goalkeepers work on their individual roles. And then if we find there's, there's equivalent ones for the, uh, that are focusing on a defensive thing. Well, there we go. If we, if we have uh, the goalkeeping practice, then the goalkeepers work on this specific training and the others work on their individual roles, uh, which is very important to make sure you've got a few of those in there. On the other hand, maybe right now, what we should really be focusing is anything that, um, well, no, I guess the individual roles is what we're looking for. So maybe we'll throw in a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of this. Specifically some attack direct as well, which is different, but it's what we do a lot of. Mm -hmm. Doesn't match preparation help with team cohesion? Uh, yeah, I, th I think you might be right. Teamwork? Um, yeah, you're right. Maybe we should throw more teamwork stuff in here as well. That makes sense. Because, yeah, we are, you know, I don't like that we, our team is not per, specifically very, very cohesive. It's still definitely something that we are missing. Um, I think it is improving. But, yeah. Um, if we look at the social groups, I don't like that, like, there's a lot of people who are not in the core social group, which is really not great. And I don't know if there's more ways to help affect that. I, I think that the team, or I think that the, um, the higher, or the mentoring works for that. Should I have some random team meetings? Oh, I didn't realize it would immediately go into it. Uh, we started really well. Keep this up. There's no way we'll be relegated at the end of the season. Team D&D sessions. That's a good idea. Encourage. Team to assure heads don't drop. Things haven't been going our way. I don't know. Don't let the last result affect you too much. You've been in good form. Put it behind you. Look to the next match. 
Yeah, the, the a bunch of loners doesn't help with cohesion, that is true. Fucking hell. Is it because I was too negative? God damn. See, why, why do you even start talking to people? Team meetings don't usually work out well for me. Yeah, Shira, clearly it's a bit of a, a bit of a something something. Mm. Well, all right then. So a bit of a morale dip. Not gonna lie, safe scum team meetings, you can never tell how they go. Yeah, it's really hard to, uh, to pick up on. Ah, well. Let's uh, advance time a little bit and see what develops. Again, we're not going to have another match here. Uh, Ian McCall's response to suggesting that his team were lucky to grab a late goal was feisty to say the least. Dude, it was literally after the 90th minute. Come on. Have anything else to say on the matter? Yeah, let, let's dive in here. Yeah, let's dive in. Let, let's, let's give in to the drama. Yeah, I'm happy with her performance, just not the matter in which the game unfolded late on. If he thinks otherwise, let him think that way. Yeah. Should be enough for my editor. There we go. I'll give you some good copy to work with. Never talk to the team, just X's and O's only. Drama? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, man, let's let's do it. Let's do the whole, uh, let's do the whole Total Wolf Christian Horner thing. Really get it going. <clears throat> no scouting report, uh-huh. going to be another away match this okay so this one next match is going to be a cup match but it's against a team we do play in the championship um and in fact is in a better position overall in the championship they're second overall uh i think partick may have taken the lead after oops after them beating us here yeah that's exactly it so these two are sort of swapping positions back and forth we're down in eighth now unfortunately Still outside the relegation zone, but not by much. Uh, so yeah, this, this next match isn't gonna affect our standings over here. So instead, let's talk about these competitions. So this is, uh, sorry, was that in the Scottish Cup? No, the SPFL Trust Trophy over here, which the board does not consider to be important. So even if we lose here, they're not gonna be bothered, but it would be really nice to snatch a win here. It is gonna be away against a better team. So we really do wanna come in, I think with this sort of cautious 4-4, 4, 4, 4 3, 3 kind of mentality vibe is gonna be okay. What's the schedule for this uh, after this match here? Okay, it's gonna be another week before the next one. Uh, and a week before we play it and a week after it. So worrying about rest and things like that isn't too much of a concern. So we can we can play our top 11. That's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Hampton posted on seasoning things back. Yeah, I saw that. Um, did you, uh, did, <laughs> there's a charity auction that went, went on where one of the things that you could bid on was a tour of the Mercedes factory and Christian Horner. <laughs> Has won that he 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 won the bid, he had the winning bid for the tour of the Mercedes factory. That was all up on the uh, the Formula One subreddit today and the news pages. Very entertaining. I love it. Uh, we got a lot of people with yellow card warnings. I mean, literally, we could have three people like just out back to back to back over here. Uh, that could ruin a few games. I yeah, will attend the meeting here and see what the deal is. Recommend individual corner taking training for Patrick Redding. Yeah, sure, do it. Uh, Sean McGinty currently seen as regular starter. Changes thing to fringe. No. Okay, training's been going well for Mixwell and Thompson, two of our loners. Uh, yeah, move on. Uh, Paul Mooney. Oh yeah, the under 18s coaching team, which I'm not gonna care about because we don't have any under 18s right now. So it's really not a big deal. Okay. You have those meetings less often, but it does seem like a good time to kind of pick up on some of those things whenever we get a chance. Yellows are only for the cup. Oh, they're not. They don't carry over. Okay. Oh, air players named. Oh, McAllister over here. Really? Oh, that's interesting. We only played him for the one match. Like, recently, because he threw a fit recently. That he wasn't playing enough. And we're like, suck it. Deal with it. 
Injury update. Fractured lower legs. Lower leg, all right, still potentially up to three weeks. More. Injury update. Scouted Patterson. Uh, okay. McGee. All right, fine. Hopefully the training's going well. Take another look at uh, how everyone's feeling about their various positions soon. Air under 18 suffered defeat. Okay. Again, <laughs> we don't really have an actual under 18s team. It's worth noting, in real life, Air United doesn't really have that either. They do have a youth academy, but I don't think there's a there's a proper under 18 team, which is why our squad here doesn't have an actual under 18s. In fact, I suspect that's the case in a lot of the uh, the Scottish Championship and below the teams in the game over here too. Probably a lot of the just the, the dark named characters. We are not really players. Gonna face Inverness. There'll be a press conference. I'm gonna stop before advancing past the press conference. We're gonna save that for next time. Fractured leg only three weeks out. Oh, he's been out for two months already. Uh, Bavariana, Bavar Bavariani? Yeah, three weeks estimated remaining. Um, all right, various scouts are happening, that's fine. Joe Chalmers, dude, you've been such a great player, but man, you gotta, you gotta train better, man. There you go, morale went up, good. You know what? I should yell at more people. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the yelling will continue. The criticizing will continue until morale improves. Yeah, these individual chats go really well for us. And the thing is, criticizing the lack of training, not only can it sometimes increase the, uh, the morale, um, but it can increase their, like, work rate and stuff. Which is a really good trait to have uh, quite high up. Now you're still doing your uh, your general rehab going on. Good, excellent. That that will help to bounce you back hopefully. But yeah, you've taken some dips, which is a real shame. And Murad's quite a good player for us. And yeah, he had broken his leg, and it was predicted to be three to four months out. Looks like it's going to be on the lower end of that. Looks like it's going to be closer to three months total rather than the four months, which is really really good news for us. But it has definitely hurt us. Oh, um, I'm gonna back up here. Not do the tactical meeting now. We're gonna we're gonna put a stop in here. Uh, for today's stream. Still, um, despite the kind of disappointing last minute score uh, versus Pat Partick Thistle over here, right? Because what, what minute did they actually score in? Yeah, 92 minutes in, they scored. Because I was really hoping to pick up that 1-0. Uh, and yeah, we had a lot of on-target shots. We could have gotten very lucky and actually won that match entirely. I mean, they did, they were the stronger team overall. You know, there's no doubt about that, obviously. Uh, but there's, we really could have won there. Um, and the draw was definitely starting to look very, very likely and it would have been a beautiful thing. Um, but I can't, I can't fault the players. I can't fault the tactics. Uh, this 4-3-3 seems to be doing exceptionally well for us. We were expecting to beat Morton. We weren't expecting to slaughter them. And honestly, with Hamilton, I kind of would have been okay with a draw of some kind as well. And they're 2-0, just beautiful victory. Really, really nice to see it. So overall feeling really good about that. Dun, dun, dun. That's true. Partick Thistle are now leading the division. That's true. So the fact that like we didn't get crushed is amazing, but it wouldn't it would have been great to come away with a point over here. It would have been really beautiful to do. Uh, so we'll see. Although I guess Inverness is coming. Uh, where's their I don't know, like their form? In terms of like, their latest matches are. And just their report. It would be nice if they were coming in with a low morale. You know what I mean? Oh, last fast five matches. Oops. Last two matches. What? I only have info about their last two matches? The beat Queen of the South, they lost against Hamilton. And this is just like visual noise. Can't really get anything out of that. Can they get injured if you throw a water bottle too often? <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap it up here. Uh, our next live stream is gonna be on Wednesday where we are gonna be starting our Let's Play of Crusader Kings 3 with the Royal Court expansion. If you guys are into the Vroom Vrooms, A Kiss for Luck is playing some Motorsport Manager today. So we're gonna go ahead and raid her channel. Otherwise, I'll see you on Wednesday for Crusader Kings and Saturday for more Dwarf Fortress, I believe. Thanks a lot, everyone. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.